Hi guys, I'm Leo from MediaWay and today we're going to learn how to create an amazing Spider-Verse scene in Blender using only free assets and no plugins. Loads of tips and tricks in this one. We're going to cover constraints to help with targeting lighting and we're also going to do some basic modelling and learn how to use the wireframe modifier. Finally, we're going to be in the compositor to add some amazing post-processing effects. It's all rendered with Eevee, so it should be nice and fast for you. You're going to love this one. Let's get started. Let's get started by hopping over to Sketchfab and downloading these models. First is a nice model of the city of LA that I found for you. And the second model is Miles from the Spider-Verse. So to download these, uh, just log into Sketchfab and just click download 3D model. Uh, you can download blend format for the Spider-Man and you can download the FBX model for the LA Night City. Once they've both downloaded, if you go into your downloads folder and just extract them here. And what I like to do, um, so here's Miles from the Spider-Verse. We've got a textures folder and we've got a source folder. So I usually like to copy, just control C, and just paste it inside the textures folder. So when Blender opens up, it can find the textures nice and easy next to the blend file. Uh, for the LA Night Sky, let's just extract that as well. And we'll just do the same thing. There's another zip file in here that you'll need to extract. And again, you'll see the FBX file along with all the textures all together. We're starting with the default scene. Press A to select everything, X to delete everything. Next, we're going to go to File, Import, and we'll import the buildings first. So import FBX, go to your Downloads folder, find the FBX file, and press Import FBX. Okay, now we can see this model of LA is just imported in here. Next, we're going to append the Spider-Man file. So because this is a native blend file, we can use append rather than import. So if you go back straight to your downloads folder, find Spider-Man again, find the blend file, double click that, then go to collections and go to the pose collection. And actually Spider-Man, let's just move LA out of the way. So G to grab Z to move up. The Spider-Man we want is this one just here. There he is. Hello Spider-Man. Actually just popping into look dev mode, we can see this bright purple means that some of the material still haven't been loaded. So just go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files, go to your Downloads folder again, and just press Finding Missing Files. From here, we're just going to get everything set up in the right place. So what we'll do, we'll just delete these other two Spider-Man models by selecting them and pressing X, and Delete, and that one, X, Delete. And then we're gonna press, select this one, press G to grab, Move him over on the X axis by pressing G and then X. And then we're gonna kind of add a camera. Let's start to get things framed up a bit. So Shift and A, we're gonna add a camera. If you press zero on your number pad, you can actually go to straight to the camera view. Uh, we're gonna set the focal length to 35, which is slightly wide angle. Yeah, what we'll do, we're just gonna move things around just in the viewport here. So, so with the camera, press G and then X and just move that so it's roughly in front of Spider-Man. And then we're gonna move Los Angeles back down. So G and then Z to grab that and move it down. Right, so we're gonna have a look in the, I think what we want to do, because we want Spider-Man to be sort of on top of a building. So we're gonna move LA down a bit, G and then Z to grab. We're also gonna scale it up a lot. So press S to scale, Let's scale it up a lot. G to grab, X to move on the X axis and G to grab and Z to move it down. So we kind of want Spider-Man to sort of be looking as if he's overlooking the city. So if you press zero to get in your camera view, and then a nice way to mess around with the camera view is if you go to view and then navigation, and then you go to walk navigation, and then you can move in and out left and right with W, A, S, and D. I'm gonna just move around a little bit, just roughly, we might tidy this up later. So put Spider-Man in the center of the shot with LA behind. So we're gonna add one more thing to the scene. 
and you'll see why we do this in a minute. So if you just shift and click, shift and right click on Spider-Man, that'll put the 3D cursor just on him there. Now shift and A to add, and we're gonna add in a cube. G to grab and then press Y to just move it across so it's next to Spider-Man and not on top of him. And with the cube selected, you're gonna press tab and that takes us into edit mode. Press S to scale. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna scale this vertically. So then press S and then Z to scale it vertically. And this is gonna become one of those sort of wireframe towers that we see on top of buildings, like a radio tower. So what we could do first, let's um, select the top face. So press three on your keyboard to select the top face, or you can do, either do it up here. Press S to scale, and we just want this to kind of be like a triangle shape. Then we're gonna press Control on R, and this is gonna add in a loop cut. So if you move your mouse to sort of the middle of the model, and then roll your mouse wheel, so we've got, you know, I don't know, eight cuts or so, then left click to confirm that and then right click just to leave those in the center. And then we're also gonna add a loop cut on the other direction. So if you go to the top, click and then right click and same on this side. So move your mouse to the top so it highlights this part. Left click and then instead of moving it, you just press right click, that leaves it in the center. So basically we've kind of got this grid of tower shapes here. But what I want to do, I want to kind of have triangle inserts in them. So what we'll do, press, press A to select everything, then go to face and go to triangulate faces. And that gives us this kind of grid pattern here. And you'll see why this is important in a minute. Tab out of edit mode, hop over to the modifier stack and we're gonna add in the wireframe modifier. It converts all of those lines we had into edit mode into a wireframe and we can just adjust the thickness just whatever you see, whatever looks good to you. Uh, let's just quickly add a material to this. Click on the materials on the, the right, click new material. And we'll just change the base color so it's black. And I think that's all we need to do for this. Let's quickly save this scene so we don't lose it through any blender crashes. File, save as. Okay, we're gonna add some light to this scene now. So click on your world settings. And what we're gonna do is change the color from sort of this dark gray. Click on this little dot here, and we're gonna actually change it to a sky texture. Let's pop into viewport shading to see this. Okay, and what we'll do, I think we'll just take the sun elevation a little bit lower, and add some air in to kind of give it a bit more of a, a night sky color, 2.4, something like that. And just tweak the ozone, just to give it a bit of a bluer color. Something like that, that's quite nice. Right, let's get back into the camera view. Press zero on your number pad. We're gonna turn Spider-Man around, so click on his bones. Press R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis, and then just pull him around a bit, so he's kind of looking, just so he's looking at the camera, about like that. Just grab the tower, grab, press G to grab, Y to move on the Y axis. Just Let's just move it into shot. And I'm just gonna move the camera down a touch. Let's just do this, press N on your keyboard to pop this out here. Let's just move the camera down on the Z axis a little bit. I kind of want Spider-Man just to feel a bit more as though he's in control. So tweak the Z to just pull it down a bit and then we're gonna rotate it just on the X axis. So it just feels like we're looking up at Spider-Man a bit more, it gives him a bit more of a hero pose. Right, I want Spider-Man, we're just gonna move his body. So click on his bones tap into pose mode, click on his skeleton bone here, then click on viewport display, just press in front so you can see all these bones, and we're just gonna rotate his neck. I think that bone there might be the right one. Press R to rotate, in fact, double to press R. And just rotate that bone, just so he's looking over there. Just with LA in the background, let's pop back into object mode. Click back on Los Angeles. R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis. And just rotate that until you've got quite a nice view of LA. I think that's quite nice. I quite like this little road here leading to the picture. G to grab, Y to move over. And I think what we will do, if I press Shift and D, we can duplicate LA. 
and press X to move it on the X axis. We're going to stick it a bit further in the background, rotate it on the Z axis to make it look a bit different. And now when we pop back into the camera view, we've just got a few more buildings in the background. In fact, I might even scale that up a bit just to give the impression that there's a bit more going on in the background. I think also what we could do, let's click on this model again, then go to shading. So actually get some real light coming out of these windows. We'll take the, um, the diffuse color map here. Let's just move that down a bit. And we're going to link the color into the emission. And that will mean, let's just turn the emission strength up to show you, anything light, light colored in the image actually starts to emit light at this point. So just tweak that up, that doesn't need to be too high, probably something like five, five or seven. Okay, back into camera view, starting to look nice. So just let's change some of the render settings. So select EV, we're gonna click ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflections. Press F12 to do a quick render. Okay, that looks quite good. So now if we hop into compositing, we're actually gonna do some compositing nodes here. So to use the compositing nodes, click use nodes. And basically the compositor lets you kind of do some nice clever stuff with your render after it's finished rendering to give it a nicer look. So we're gonna add in shift A, I'm gonna search for lens distortion and drop that in there. And let's add a viewer in as well. Shift A, search for a viewer. Pop that there. Right, we can see. So the lens distortion, let's, let's show you what this does. So you can actually distort the image this way and that way, but we don't want to do that. We want to use this dispersion tool. And what that does, it kind of gives this, it's like a, a lens fault really, where it kind of splits the uh, red, green, and blue into its separate components so you get to see it. But we're going to use this very subtly. I think just point 0.1 will be enough. And that just gives a slightly kind of almost like a motion blur effect. Um, we're also going to add a touch of hue and saturation to this. So Shift A, search for hue. And let's just drop that in here pop it into the viewer so we can see it. We're just gonna increase the saturation very slightly just to give it that cartoon, hyper real sort of effect. Heading back to the layout tab, and it's starting to look really nice. Let's just hide these bones, so switch them off so they're not in front of the viewport display. And what we want to do really now is actually highlight Spider-Man so he stands out much better against this background. So we're gonna do this by adding some lights. So what I'm gonna do first is shift and right click on Spider-Man's head to move the 3D cursor there. And we're going to add an empty, an empty cube. Just press S to scale that down so it just fits his head really. Now we're gonna use this cube as a target for the lights to point at. So when we add a light in, it's automatically gonna point at Spider-Man. So press shift A again, add it in a light, an area light, uh, G to grab, uh, y to move across. With the light selected, we're going to go over here to this little tab here called Constraints, and we're going to add a Track To Constraint. And the target is going to be this empty that we've just made. And now you'll see this light, where has it gone? If I press G and grab this light, it always points at that empty that we've just made. So I'm gonna press, let's just have a look, let's just have a look. Let's just increase the brightness of the light. So with the light selected, click on the light here. Let's give that up to 250 watts. So I want to add a few lights. So I want to kind of add this nice side light here gives this nice rim effect of lighting around Spider-Man. If you press Shift and D with the light selected, we'll add another light on this side. I think we're going to, let's just move that one back. So press G, grab. X to move on the X axis. I just want this to kind of be more, basically sort of lighting the other side. Maybe we'll have another light on the front of him. Let's uh, 
Shift D. Pull a light around the front, but I think this is going to be less bright, this one. I think maybe... Maybe just like around 80 watts, just to kind of pick out the front a little better. Okay. So now the kind of, it's looking pretty good. Let's just do a quick render, press F12. That's looking pretty good. So the only thing I'd say about this is the buildings in the background are maybe just a little bit too distracting, really, from the Spider-Man image. Now there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. We could go to the camera. We could switch depth of field on. We could focus on the empty again. And you could dial down the f-stop and that kind of makes the background out of focus. So that's pretty nice. That gives kind of a quite a nice bocker effect. Let's render that. That's quite nice. The other thing we could do is actually add some fog behind Spider-Man. So press Shift and A, add in a cube, G to grab, X to move on the x-axis. Let's just move this behind Spider-Man. Let's move it quite a long way behind Spider-Man over there and scale it up, S to scale. So at the minute, obviously you can't see through this. So what we're going to do is going to add a fog material. So click on your material, click new. We'll call it fog. And instead of the surface being a principal DSB, <laughs> I'll say it right, principal BSDF, we're going to remove that. Where it says volume, we're going to add a principled volume shader. Now, by default, this is quite thick fog. We obviously don't want it to be this thick. So just pull the density down. Let's try 0.1. In the camera view, let's have a look at that. Maybe just what we need to do, let's have a quick look. Let's uh, just scale this on the Y axis, S to scale up Y. Let's have a look at that. So that's pretty cool. I think one's maybe still a touch too dense. Let's try 0.05. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's render that. Look at that. So we've got lovely dispersion here, kind of fog just knocking the background down a little bit. Some nice rim lighting on the edge of Spider-Man just to show he's the important hero in this shot. It's looking great. The only thing I'm not quite sure about is this uh, tower's just a little bit too distracting in the render. So I'm just going to take the specular down the tower, probably just very slightly above one. And now when we render this, that's it. That's looking cool. Brilliant. Okay, guys, I've just spent a few more minutes on this, just making this into an animation. What I've done in pose mode, I've selected the neck bone and I've actually, let's just uh, show you quickly. I actually just animated the neck bone pressing basically by pressing R to rotate as we did earlier and then pressing I to set a keyframe and setting rotation. So we've set some basically some keyframes so he kind of looks around and nods at you. And I've also animated the camera position. So where's the camera? So basically the camera now just pans around the city as Spider-Man moves his head. I'm going to add some sound effects to this and uh, render it out. Hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.